Thornton. I'm very pleased to welcome Dr. Thornton to our show today. Hello. Thank you. And this is a sequel to your previous memoir, Ditch Diggers Daughters. Yes, sir. Uh, which became a bestseller. Yes, it did. Uh, yeah. Why did your dad always want his daughters to be doctors? Well, my dad was uh, the generation of uh, the Great Depression. And uh, when you're very poor, the only thing that you can think of as success is physicians. And many of our brethren from abroad, they want their kids to be doctors too. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, the Italians, uh, my son the doctor, my daughter the doctor, they felt that medicine. And my dad would say, if you can heal somebody, if you can make somebody, well, it doesn't make any difference what color or gender you are. But I want my daughters to be doctors. Well, your father obviously was uh, a man who was, uh, although he was a ditch digger for part of the time, yes. He was a man uh, of great intelligence, and you, you quote him all throughout the book. Yes. So do you still hear his voice in the back of your head? All the time, every day. There's not a day that goes by that some of his wise words or sayings or thought processes go through my, through my mind when I try to analyze a certain situation. Did he prepare you for racism and sexism, uh, especially? Uh, well, he had to uh, because even he raised six girls. We have, I have, uh, he had five biological daughters. And our ado- our foster sister, Betty, so he raised six girls. And you see racism and sexism. When I In Long Branch, I didn't know about racism and sexism. We had a great time growing up in Long Branch. And only when I looked at the television down in, uh, in Alabama and that I saw that there was something with regard to racism. Sexism, uh, believe it or not, is ongoing. And I've had more problems being a woman than I've ever had being a, a woman of color, being, being, a, being a black person. Are all of your sisters, uh, one of them has died, right? Yes, Donna uh, passed away, yes. Uh, all the others doctors? Yes, they are. <laughs> so your father got what he wanted. He did, he did, he absolutely did. He also worked overtime so that all of you could learn how to play music. Can you tell us about the Thornton Singer oh. Sisters Band? Well, the Thornton Sisters, I think, basically was just one of his ingenious genius ideas of keeping us together. It started with my sister, Donna, the one who passed away, um, had, you remember Cracker Jacks, little, little prizes in a box mm-hmm. of Cracker Jacks? She, saw, she found a little red saxophone in a box of Cracker Jacks. She said, Daddy, what's this? Can I have a real one? And he goes like, well, uh, I don't have the money to get a real one. So he asked one of his military fellows um, uh, to see if he had an, a saxophone, and he did. And to, and to her credit, my sister played with that saxophone without lessons. She just slept with it, ate with it, went to school with it. And all of a sudden, my father and mother said, well, she needs some lessons because it's really tearing up the household. So the fact of the matter was we went to our um, middle school um, music teacher. And he said, sure, I will teach them. So my sister went, my other sister went, and all of a sudden music started to come into our household. If she can play saxophone, I can play something else. And we started the Thornettes. Uh, and, and what did you play? I play alto saxophone. Mm-hmm. I played alto saxophone. I still play uh, alto saxophone and, and soprano. And did you travel and earn money? Yes, we did. And that, that the Thornton Sisters uh, band became, uh, we went on Ted Mack and the original Amateur Hour in those days. And... From that time on, uh, the Apollo, we won six consecutive weeks at the uh, the amateur uh, uh, week on Wednesday nights at the Apollo. We're always looking for that hook that would drag mm-hmm. people off the stage. And from that time on, but it was always it was always back to the books, back to the books. So you didn't ever consider playing, staying in show business? Well, Was my, it just a means to an end? My father, it was a means to to an end from my dad. But for us, we wanted to be in show, but daddy wanted to be mobbed. We want to have our autographs. And we were, played at the Brooklyn Fox with Murray the K and a swinging soiree. He said, forget about this doctor dream. We're the Thornton sisters. He said, no, 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 girls. You know, when you're 15, 16, got great figures, looking good, people will look at it. But just think 15, 20, 30 years, when you're 50, 60 years of age, trying to blow a saxophone. A 50-year-old woman, all gray, arthritic, arthritic hands. It's not a pretty sight to see. And nobody's going to pay any money to see an old, withered-up woman trying to blow a saxophone. But if you have them scripper scraps hanging around your neck, and they call you Dr. Thornton with the skill, yep, they'll be coming to see you. Your father's only partly right there. I mean, you probably, if you were really good, you probably could have had a very nice career in Uh, music. But how did you wind up going to medical school? Well, that was the mantra, to be a physician. And I, I take exception with that because the older musicians now are all men. You know, you see the stones, you, they're all men. You don't see really too many older women out there in, in the limelight. 